Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady where unentitled Karen almost gets OP arrested. I got stopped at Target yesterday due to the color of shirt I was wearing, except it wasn't red. Oh no, that's too easy. So I stopped at the local Bontars before picking up a child from school because, well, shopping is easy without a seven year old in tow, but I digress. I needed to grab a few things and as I'm browsing the epidermis cleansing gelatin, two guys between the ages of 18 to 30 walked up to me and got my attention. Hey man, you think you could help us out real quick? Me, about to sniff the Elder Spice gel, uh, I guess? So my Honda is making a funky noise and the muffler sounds like it needs tightening. I stare at them, confused. And the fluid seemed to leak from under the hood. Yeah, they do. Think you could help us out? What are you asking me to do? Call a tow shop? No, can you come take a look at the car? You could probably figure the problem out quicker than us. I don't work here guys, sorry. We know, you work at O'Reilly's. What? No, I certainly don't. You're wearing their green shirt. I look down at my dark sage green polo. Okay, I'm wearing green. O'Reilly's doesn't own the color green. I don't work there. Oh, we were looking for car parts here and saw green and thought you worked there. You're looking for car parts at Target? <laughs> they both just stare at me like I just asked why water was wet. As the silence became awkward, I pulled out my phone and brought up maps. There's an auto zone two blocks away. Go there and ask for help. They thank me disappointingly and shuffle off. I bought my cleansing supplies and left. Not exactly on the edge of my seat level excitement, but I thought it was kind of funny. Down in the comments, Cape and Sigriena says, kinda creepy. Makes me think they just wanted to get you alone outside and it was a ploy. Then Marcus Lokimis says, that nearly happened to me. There were these two women that spoke broken English asking me for a jump outside of Jack in the Box. I didn't feel comfortable with the situation and lied and said I didn't have the cables. After I placed my order, I saw them drive their car off without anyone having jumped in their car. Our next Reddit post is from I'm Not Myself. I was in Best Buy picking up some software. I do independent IT work. I wasn't wearing a blue shirt, but the racks were a mess, so I was going through the boxes looking for the one I wanted. This older guy, I'm an older guy myself, comes to me with a popular antivirus program and starts telling me his situation and wants to know if this is the best product for him. I show him a more suitable product, considerably cheaper, and I recommend it. He asks if I can check him out. I laugh for a second and explain that I'm in IT, but I don't work here. He looks a little puzzled and walks off to the register. He comes back a few minutes later with his bagged box and asks me how much I would charge to come install the software at his office. I give him my rate, he accepts, and I end up at his office cleaning up a mess of five virus infected PCs before I can install the antivirus. That was two years ago. My billings to him have exceeded $10,000 for building an effective business network. Helping people in a store you don't work in can be very profitable. Then down in the comments, OP adds this. Thanks for the positive feedback. I had another guy who got my number and called several mornings a week. He was having some sort of boot issue. I never asked for payment or his name, but after the fifth call, he asked me to come to his office and take a look at it. I offered to tell him his rate and he said, I don't give a damn what your rate is. You've helped me several times and never asked for a thing. I'll pay you whatever you want. That turned into a very lucrative multi-years business relationship plus the many referrals he gave to me. I do volunteer business coaching. I always preach to people that if you solve problems first and worry about getting paid last, you'll have all the paid work you can handle. Our next Reddit post is from Flex2019. I'm a plumber and I'm only 18. I went to trade school for high school and came out with a full-time job as an apprentice. This happened about five months ago and has had me screwed up ever since. I was working in a four-story building inside the city and there's only one elevator, which we weren't allowed to use because of the companies that worked in the building itself. And then only one spiral square staircase, needed for later. My journeyman and I were wrapping up our day and packing up everything. As the younger guy, I was sweeping and taking the loads back down to the truck to get ready to leave. And on one of my last trips, I was only taking a trash bag and a few of the hand tools I hadn't grabbed yet. I'm in my normal work clothes, but my boss isn't strict about wearing company clothes, so I'm only wearing my Dickies pants and beat up sweatshirt with no labels. I start walking down the stairs with the trash from the fourth floor to the bottom when a worker from the third floor walked out with a trash bag. I briefly walked past, just finishing my day when she scoffed at me. Me, being the kid I am, turn around and say, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there, I didn't mean to bump into you, and continue down and then she said, 
Here, take this garbage. I got a call I need to get on. I said that I was sorry and I didn't work for the building and it's not my job to take it. So she then exclaims, You're dressed as a janitor. My son is one too. You dress just like him. He has the same tools on him all day. I tried to tell her that I didn't and that I'm a plumber working above her on the fourth floor. In retrospect, yes, I could have taken it, but there wasn't one of those giant trash bins to put trash in, so we had to take it back to shop to dispose of and we didn't have much room for it in the van. I started to get annoyed, but I just remembered that I needed to take breaths and walk away. I start going down the stairs when she grabs the back of my hoodie and yanked it. I spun around like, what the hell? And she slammed the bag into my stomach, sending me stumbling down the stairs. This was when one of the coworkers comes out because of the commotion and she starts fake crying, saying I sexually harassed her and that she shoved me down the stairs in an attempt to save herself. I tried to say something getting up, but the guy was on the phone with the cops already and he took her away to calm her down. I started to get so mad at this woman, but my coworker came to me and said everything would be fine. This is when the biggest blessings ever occurred. My buddy loves to mess with me. He'd take videos of me working or being oblivious and he'd throw like coins at me to be funny or dump water on me just as a joke to lighten the day up a bit. Well, he recorded the interaction and the lady never knew he was there. That's the reason why the spiral staircase was important. By the time he made sure I was alright, the cops were there about 10 minutes after the whole thing went down. They talk to the woman and they take her side of things first. They start questioning me in the stairwell and my buddy said he witnessed it and had a video. He began to show the video to the cops of literally everything. From the moment I began down the stairs and passed this lady to her shoving me down the stairs. He talks to her and from the second he said there was a video, she turned ghost white. They took her downstairs to the cruiser and the cop came back to me asking if I needed assistance or an ambulance as I had a gash on my elbow when I stumbled down but I was totally fine though. Just in complete shock. He also asked if I wanted to press charges and I said I would. In the following time since this happened, I've taken her to court and she's been charged and is serving time for assault and battery and another thing I don't recall. What's important to know as I'm realizing now is that there were no cameras in the stairwell. I would have been screwed, absolutely screwed. It was a huge reality check for me. I could be sitting in jail serving time for something I didn't do at this very moment. It could have ruined my life to be quite honest. Luckily my buddy was there and ever since then I've never complained once about him messing around with me. Shortly after this, the building installed new cameras everywhere. Being five months later, my parents have been awesome in teaching me about all this stuff. Especially since I'm a man and it can get scary with accusations like that. They believe me and I've always been raised by them to treat women right and I'm the kid who wouldn't hurt a fly. OP, I'm glad you pressed charges. There's too many people in these stories who get away scot-free. And more importantly, does your buddy still have that video? Because I would love to get it from him. Our next Reddit post is from Local Librarian. A friend of mine recently reminded me of this. The absolute best time I ever had dealing with a Karen in the wild. It happened about 30 years ago, so I'm going strictly by memory here. I also have no clue what the name for a male Karen is, so I'll call him Ken. I used to work for a chain convenience store, and back in the late 80s, it ran into financial trouble. Corporate decided that, to cut costs, they would sell off and shut down all locations that didn't have a gas station attached. This included my location. Once the stores were sold or closed, our positions would be terminated and we'd be out of a job. Although I was only the assistant manager for our location, I was effectively running things as corporate had decided to pull my manager off to a different location. And an assistant would be good enough since the store was closing anyway. Now onto the story. Once the chain announced that they were closing the stores, it was no secret that we would be shutting down. Of course, us employees were still expected to give good customer service. That was usually no problem as we were in a good area and had plenty of decent customers. They liked us and we liked them. But at the same time, we had no flips to give for the occasional Karen. It was nice being able to shut them down. What were they going to do? Fire us? I wish I could remember specific instances, but 30 years, they all kind of run together now. The most entitled of all though was Ken. Turns out he'd bought our location from the chain and would be taking over in about a month and a half. During that time, I was working with hit honcho guys from corporate doing things at the store level for the sale. Meanwhile, Ken came in a few times a week demanding that certain things be done as if he already owned the place. 
He wanted us to change displays, order specific products, etc. Hid honcho guys had already told me to ignore his demands, so all of them were met with some variation of, No, Ken. I work for Chain, not you. And this isn't your store yet. Which sent Ken off in all his huffing glory, yelling that I wouldn't be acting like that once he ran the place. Fast forward to the final day. All the other employees had worked their last shifts, and as acting manager, I opened the store that morning. Hit Honcho guys arrived to go through whatever they needed, and shortly before noon, Ken showed up. Ken and Hit Honcho guys went in the back, and once they came back out, we closed the store in order to finalize everything. Hit Honcho guys and I cashed out the register for the last time, and most importantly, I turned over my key to the store. Once that was done, something close to the following happened. The Hit Honcho guy says, Okay, Ken, we're done. It's all yours now. And they start packing up to leave. I say, just making sure, Chain no longer owns this location. Ken is in charge now, yes? The hit honcho confirms, so I step out from behind the counter. Of course, Ken starts yelling. I think yelling was his default mode. Where do you think you're going? Home, what does it look like? You get back here and get your butt back behind that counter where it belongs. No. I don't work for you. What do you mean, no? I told you things would be different when I took over, and now you have to do what I tell you to do. With a huge grin on my face, I said, you just don't get it, do you? Ken looked confused. You bought the store, you bought the inventory, but you did not buy the employees, and you sure as hell didn't buy me. So I'll say it one last time and try to get this through to whatever functional cells may be floating around in your empty head. I don't work for you. Never have, never will. And since chain store number whatever no longer exists, I don't work there anymore either. Since I'm no longer needed here, I nod to the hit honcho guys. I'm leaving. Ken starts sputtering and yelling incoherently, realizing he now has nobody to work the register as I walk to the doors for my last time. Of course, I can't help myself. As I'm pushing the door open, I turn around and give Ken my best customer service smile and a cheery, have a nice day. If I recall correctly, the store didn't open again for a couple of days, at least, while Ken tried to hire some employees. But anyone from the neighborhood who had seen him treating us so badly before the sale wanted nothing to do with him, and even once it reopened, it didn't last long. Our next Reddit post is from Miserloo. I'm a guy just about 17 years old, and I was at a giant eagle with my dad just now. In my state, masks are required in public, as is a minimum of 6 feet distance, and yes, I followed all the rules. My father was ringing up our groceries and I was bagging them, so there was enough distance between us that, I guess, to this Karen, it looked like I worked there. But it should be noted that I was wearing a jaw shirt and literal swim trunks. Nothing even close to resembling a uniform? So I'm bagging up the goods, and I hear someone say something behind me, but the voice is way too close. I turn around and there she is, a middle-aged Karen, a mere one foot away from me, if that. But she's wearing a mask, looking right into my eyes. I freeze for a second because being autistic and having social anxiety, eye contact is a big no for me, so I quickly look away. I'm confused, so I say, what? Not with attitude or anything, just pure confusion. Karen huffs and rolls her eyes and snaps. Oh my god, I said where is this product? It hits me that she thinks I work there. Now, like I said, I'm in flight or fight mode, so I can't really formulate a response. I happened to watch Impractical Jokers the movie last night, so the first thing that comes to my mind is, up your button to the left. So, I say it. Not with attitude, I just sort of simply state it. Karen gasps, says something along the lines of, How dare you! and storms away. Luckily, my dad got a good laugh out of it and isn't mad at all as this lady did act very out of line. Our next Reddit post is from Serene Phoenix. This is what I get for going to the store instead of ordering groceries to be delivered. So with the corona stuff going on, I've been dutifully staying in my department like a decent human being and limiting any time I spend outside. Unfortunately, this has been hell on my partner's mental health and the depression is real. So I decided screw it. We're both food boys and he likes cookies. There's a giant the next block over. So I get dressed, put on my sweet Disney mask, go on Etsy, the designs are wonderful, and head out to get my partner some cookies. Now for reference, my style is hobo chic. 
So sweats, sneakers, graphic tee, and a hoodie. Keep that in mind. I go into Giant and hit for the cookie aisle. I'm considering if I want to do Oreos or if I want to be fancy and get Pepperidge Farm. These are important questions of life. When an older woman who is very short asks if I can grab something for her off the top shelf. Of course I say yes because she was nice enough to ask. I'm a simple guy. I hand her the item and go back to my contemplation. As I decide to get them both, I hear the ahem. I've worked retail and food service, so I know the sound of a wild Karen when I hear one. What's up? What's up? Is that how you treat? I have zero in the way of patience. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm gonna need you to look at me and try that line of thinking again. Who the F? Hey, 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 uh-uh. Let me tell you what we're not gonna do. I need you to calm down and chill. I know you know better. Karen still looks mad, but doesn't say anything. Now, I can help you find an employee if you want, but what you will not do is yell at me. I'm only here to get cookies. I point at my stomach. I'm a thick boy. Not that I need them. Karen cracks a smile. Gotcha. But at this point, I'm committed to this. I didn't choose thick life. It chose me. Karen starts to crack and laughs a little before all of a sudden starts to tear up. I'm six feet tall, 300 pounds, and black. A crying Karen is a bit detrimental to my continued freedom. Um, you okay? Yeah, it's just that this is the first time I've laughed in a while. My husband is in the hospital. The virus? Yeah. I'm not sure if it means much coming from the cookie guy, but I hope he recovers. Karen smiled and walked away. While she didn't apologize for popping off, I'm glad it didn't escalate further. That was r slash I don't work here lady and if you like this video then let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow.